Hey, thanks for coming. Uh, I was looking at one of my favorite pictures here by Vermeer, painting by Vermeer. Vermeer, wonderful artist. I have a painting of mine here that I wanted to kind of show off, I guess. But <clears throat> Mark Manhart is my name with the calcium therapy. Uh, we're dental practice and we enjoy practicing this method, this approach to dentistry. So I have a few more questions that people have brought up. We get so many. I just would try to cover a few. Um, first of all, I guess I thought there was a question, uh, how can dentists, how can a dentist practice without calcium therapy? Well, it really beats the heck out of me. I don't know how a dentist can do that because it's just like this painting. It would be like asking me to paint this painting without oil, without any kind of paint without black pencil even. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't even want to try to do it. It's kind of the way I am with the calcium materials. They are used, we use them so much and they do so much good. Uh, can a, high, a, a dentist uh, can practice it? Uh, uh, let's see, a hygienist can practice it. I think I've said, answered this before. Hygienists are perfectly situated to practice this. Uh, they're kind of dominated by dentists, and so it's really hard for them to break away and be on their own. It, it, there's so many legal things that have been set up, but doing calcium therapy is safe more safe than what a hygienist does in giving anesthesia. Anesthesia. That is, compared to calcium, that is really dangerous to do. Uh, for a dentist to use high-speed drills. Oh, nothing like that. For a dentist to take out teeth, that is really uh, risky. Nothing like doing calcium therapy. Calcium therapy is so safe. It's more safe than almost everything we do in dentistry. So uh, it's a perfect thing for hygienists. And it's not only that it's safe for the dentist, the hygienist, the patient at home. We send people from all over the world uh, materials that help them take care of their teeth and now their skin, in fact, to keep, protect the teeth, uh, uh, keep it, keep the teeth safe and strong and clean and beautiful. That's another very good thing. Um, let's see, hi, Janice. Air, well, every field of dentistry. It's kind of like this. Uh, these materials of calcium, when they were first designed back in the 50s and 60s, uh, you would take a little of this material in, of calcium and zinc and you would take your, your instrument and just put a dab right there. Remember a little dab will do you? Well, that's all it would be used for. And you, almost every dentist in the world has been trained in using these materials this way. <clears throat> but uh, the average dentist would use that dab maybe once in a month, if not once in six months. It's important, little dab. It's like uh, certain things in a painting, certain things in a painting. Uh, that little dab, like on the 
pearl on the girl's earring, a, a little dab here and a little dab there changes everything. And that's what these calcium materials do. It's just that we've learned to do them in a lot of places all over the mouth and all over the teeth. And they are just, we use it uh, so much and we send it all over the world. Like there was a question here about, I remember last time I did this, this guy's a fly from Canada to Omaha? Never. That's what his comment was. Well, uh, we do get a lot of things in interest from Canada, and we now have a dentist in Canada who is a brilliant fellow, and he is such a kind fellow. He was looking for something that was missing, I think, in his practice, and I think he found it. He's just been doing really well, and every once in a while we refer people up to him into Canada. Uh, <clears throat> there is something about teaching dentists that is really hard. We talked once before about uh, consilience, so taking the old, new and connected to the old. Uh, it is very hard for dentists in their minds to take, here's what I think is in a dentist's mind. You go to school, it seems like forever, and you, you go to college and it's harder than heck. And you go to dental school and it is harder than heck. Physically hard, you know? I'm a dentist. Well, that means you've put a lot into it. <clears throat> and so the tendency is that, okay, we are, we're here, we're practicing, we know everything, we got all of this equipment, all this fancy stuff in the office now, and, and especially with the COVID uh, virus, and uh, we're, it's very dangerous for to work on patients, and but we can do it. We've got to get a dentist to, to know and understand that they did that did everything to be a dentist. And they spent so much being a dentist. And you know, so many are in debt still from be, getting through school. That though those things they deserve credit for. But when, when you've got something that comes along and it sneaks in, and it sneaks in, and you notice that it is working, don't be afraid that we have something that has gotten in to dental work every day that we work, we use calcium materials on almost every patient. Don't be afraid that that has uh, compromised what you have put into this, and if you if you put it, in, you're going to get into trouble, or Joe, you know, no, no, that is exactly the opposite. It makes what you did really, really work better, and you you find out, my goodness. Why didn't I start doing this 20 years? When I got into this, I thought, I'm going to have to back, go back and work on every one of my patients and start over because this is so helpful for those patients. Well, don't be silly. I'm not going to do that. But that's what the dentists, I think, get in their mind that there is, there is nothing really new into my field, and I just don't feel that it's necessary to be able to just have No. I can take all we learned in dentistry in the last 50 years doing this on thousands of people and know that there are things that, how does it work? How does it, how is it that a Famous dentist from St. Louis calls and says, uh, Marco, uh, 
do you get numbness uh, in the nose when you do this? Uh, no, no, why? Well, well, uh, you said there's no nerve that's not a nerve. And uh, here we've been taught and we've been thinking this is a nerve. And that if we go there to do it, it will get uh, knock that nerve out and it'll be gone for the rest of their life. I said, no, we, we, we do it a lot. I don't think you should be afraid that this is not a problem that you might harm the patient with anesthesia. No. And I kind of felt him go, oh, boy, thank goodness. Something is something is being solved here, and that's what we're doing. With this, I'm sorry, I get into this and I get into this painting, and uh, I love it because it's old, but I also love it because it's calcium therapy. Mark Manhart here, come visit us. Visit us at calciumtherapy.com. Thank you.